morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Wednesday, August the 10th. Has it been hot in your area of the country, in case you're not from New York? We've had some sizzling days at the end of July. Coming into August, we've had some heat. It's a heat wave. That's an old song. You wouldn't know it. But anyway, it's been hot. And um, it's so such a blessing to come in like to an air-conditioned restaurant or our church is air-conditioned, thankfully, like mo- almost all places are. And I've often thought, how did people live in Arizona? <clears throat> 113. I know they say it's dry heat. Trust me. Low humidity. At 113, we're talking baking bread in an oven. Or Florida with humidity. Before AC, how do they do that? How do they sleep at night? Just goes to show you adapt. Well, I want to be thankful for everything God has given me spiritually, materially, emotionally, family-wise, and I thank God for you. I really do. Those of you who watch, I thank God that someone's interested in reading the Bible with me. So let's do it. Galatians 3, verse 12. Here's an important verse. The law, Paul is now distinguishing between law and grace, law and grace, Moses and Jesus, earning salvation, receiving a gift, earning salvation through the law versus receiving a gift, a free gift. The law, the moral law, every kind of law, is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says the person who does these things will live by them. The law has nothing to do with faith. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. So the law has nothing to do with faith. How many years did I go to church? I never heard anyone distinguish that from me. I wasn't too bright. I wasn't listening that much as a little kid, but as a teenager, as a young adult, I didn't know the difference between law and faith, law and grace. I didn't know that from a ham sandwich. I didn't just like, what are you talking about? So I want to break it down. You say you're repeating yourself a lot. No, I'm not. I'm just reading this important verse here. The law has nothing to do with faith. If you wake up in your in the morning trying to obey law, you're not walking by faith. If you're walking by faith in Christ, you're now not walking under the law, under the restrictions and constraints of the law. I know what you're thinking. If you just talk about faith in Jesus, then you can do any old thing. No, you won't. Because having faith in Jesus and letting him work in and through you you will actually become more Christ-like every day without trying to be. By trusting, we obey. By trying, we disobey. This is the the, the um, predicate here of the book of Galatians. The just shall live by faith. Not just start, but live every day trusting the Lord. Because if you live under the law, You're going to be cursed because everyone has to keep it perfectly. Remember? But Christ bore the curse. Perfect Jesus was cursed on the tree. Not because of what he did. Because of what we did, which was put on him. He who knew no sin became sin. Didn't just bear our sins. He became Sin, that's how sinful our sins are. Put on him, he became, as it were, sin. The holy lamb of God. So that was the picture in the Old Testament. They brought the sacrificial lamb, and you put your hand on it. Why did you have to put your hand on the lamb before it was killed? The symbolism of, 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 um, of connection and transfer. My sins are going on that innocent lamb. And now my sins through the animal have been put away in the Old Testament sense, never really cleansed. That's why he needed Christ, the lamb of God. 
So now the blood would be shed and the blood would be shed of an innocent lamb. No, he wasn't innocent anymore. He was symbolically uh, holding um, and bearing our sin. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, behold the lamb of God. Why? He would die for the sins of all of us. And when we put trust in him, just put faith in him, it's the transfer. Yes, I receive his sacrifice for my sins. He was cursed on a tree by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, cursed of everyone who's hung on a pole. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. I've gone back and retraced my steps on this for a reason. Because 62% of America says they believe they're going to heaven because they live a good life. I wonder what percent of those who go to church still at the end of the meeting just make up their mind. That was a good word I heard. Oh, I know I've messed up, but now, no, I mean business. Now, wait till you see the week I'm going to live. No, no, I'm, no, this is, I am muy serio. I am going to obey. I'm going to be loving. I'm going to be kind. No more gossip. No more looking at things I shouldn't look at. I'm just, I'm God, I know you're going to help me, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to show you I mean business. And when you have a good day in your mind or my mind, we feel like, hey, I feel some peace here. I'm doing pretty good. Then when you mess up, you lose all your peace. Why? Because you just smashed your righteousness. Your right standing with God just took a right hook to the jaw. Ba-boom. Now, I, he's not my father anymore. Why? Because I messed up so bad. And, and the devil just comes and says, and you, think, and you call yourself a Christian? You're not a Christian. You got to start putting, get, get yourself together, get your act together. He loves that because he knows we'll never get our act together. But as long as he has us trying, he has us getting our eyes off of Jesus. Jesus. Only a look at Jesus. Look it up on YouTube. Calvin Hunt and the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir from Mucho Años Pasado, way back. Only a look at Jesus will take away your sin. Like that pole was put up, the plague came to Israel and they set up a brazen serpent on a pole and God said to Moses, everyone who looks at it will be saved from the, from the, the plague. Only a look. The look meaning a gaze of trust. But that was just a picture of the gaze, the faith, the trust we put in Christ. Thank God today. That, let's thank God today that he became a curse for me and you. How could we not love him? He took the curse so we could be blessed. Praise God today. See you tomorrow.